Hey everyone, hope you're all doing it very well and welcome back to another video here on the channel. I also hope that you're ready for the Christmas season because that is essentially only around the corner. Today's video topic deals with the internal resistance of a lithium polymer battery pack and you guys have asked if your charger specifically does not contain the functionality or capability in order to measure the internal resistance, how are you supposed to obtain that with all the tools that you may have at home? Well, this is exactly what we're going to answer and that fancy tool that we're going to need in addition to your charger and battery is going to be a multimeter. Now your multimeter, I had to go and get another multimeter because I didn't have the precision that I was looking for and after for this video. So we're looking for a multimeter that can measure the total amount of voltage that you have in your specific battery. We're going to look at a 4S battery pack here today. So I'm looking to measure, you know, in and around that 15 volts or so. And at 15 volts, I can get three decimal places and that's exactly what I'm looking for. Now we did have here in Canada a postal service strike in, with Canada Post and as you can imagine this did delay a bunch of packages for many people across the country including myself. I think I waited about six or seven weeks for this to come in uh, based on when I expected it to be here. So it certainly has been an issue where I've had to take some of these videos and postpone them and bring other video topics ahead. So there was a little bit of mix here. I do plan to do videos now because I got the equipment and that brings me to the next point here thanks a lot to this company Finercy I don't know if I'm saying that exactly right probably not but they have sent me this multimeter after I was looking at this specific product and this is one that can do exactly what we're looking to do well here in this video not only is it going to help us in this video but I'm going to use this as well as another unit that I have in other videos so we're going to do many videos uh, using this equipment to measure a bunch of different things we got an oscilloscope inside of this thing where we can measure waveforms. I can't wait to try that out. I haven't tried that out yet. I've gone through a lot of the multimeter functionality and this thing is really cool. So we're going to get into that. What I really like about this is it comes in of course that box there and then from there you get this case and inside the case this specific unit for the model here. The model is the 2C53T. This specific one actually comes with all the probes that allow us to measure different things utilizing the complete package of what this multimeter can actually do for us. Here you can see how it starts up and all the different menus and stuff that you have access to and we're going to get more into it as we use this and in addition to what I just said there more videos when we use the oscilloscope functionality. So I can't wait to get to that part of it. I think that's going to be really cool but for today we're not going to get into that type of functionality. Let's use the multimeter here today in order to determine the internal resistance of our battery pack. Now the other thing that you might need is a calculator, but your phone probably has this functionality and all you need to do is open up the calculator app, follow the directions that we're going to go through here in this video and you can do some very simple math, I promise it's not going to be too too bad. Another component, it's somewhat optional but definitely going to be super helpful, is a cell phone or a video camera to just capture what is going on on the multimeter. This way you don't need to remember any values because I certainly can't remember them and I don't even think I can read them fast enough for how fast these numbers are going to be changing. All right, let's get into the first step here. What you want to do is set up your charger so that it is able to charge your battery pack. Connect your power supply, plug it in, get that battery pack plugged in as well. Now for the balance lead, if your charger will allow you to not plug the balance lead in and you can charge a lithium polymer battery pack, this is going to make it a little bit easier. And just to make sure you want to have your battery at around storage voltage so you're not getting anywhere near max amount of voltage. We're going to only going to be charging the battery pack for less than 10 to 15 seconds. So we're not really charging the battery pack up much at all. So you don't need to worry about the balance tap for this very short period of time that we're going to be charging the battery. Just make sure you're around that storage voltage. Once you have your charger all set up, the next thing that you'll want to do is make sure that you can use your multimeter to measure the voltage on your battery pack. You'll want to do this at the balance tap. This is why we don't plug it in. If you do have to plug it in, then you're going to have to use the balance board and see if you can measure the same spots here on the outermost pins of this battery. The outermost pins is going to give you the maximum amount of voltage there, which is going to be the total voltage of your battery. A four cell battery, if it was at nominal voltage, would come in at, of course, 14.8 
volts. Once you've located the pins that you need to use your multimeter on, now's the time where you can try it out and make sure that you can read the voltage of that specific battery pack. The reason why we place the multimeter on the balance tap rather than the main leads is because we know the amount of current that's going through that balance tap. We're not using or pulling any current from that balance tap, so we can assume that the current there is negligible or zero in this case. The only amount of current is that that goes to the multimeter in order for the voltage to be read. Now that you have your setup set up in such a way where you can measure the voltage of your battery pack, what you'll want to do next is initiate a charge. Now the charge cycle on your battery pack is going to be a 1.5C rate. If you have a 5,000 milliamp hour battery pack, that's gonna be 7.5 amps. You can then dial up the rate on your charger up to that 7.5 amps and then initiate the charge. For the next step here, this is where a cell phone or a camera will come in handy. If you can set that up in such a way where it sees the multimeter and can read the numbers, that's gonna be super helpful. Then you don't need to memorize anything. You don't even need to really do anything. All you need to do is initiate that charge at 7.5 amps for that 5,000 milliamp hour battery pack and then take a recording. So you record the time and then once you have that battery charging for about 10 seconds, you can kill that charge, stop the charge and you're gonna have the data in order to measure here very shortly. Now that you've canceled the charge at that 10 second mark, what you can do is unplug the battery pack. We won't need to charge the battery pack any further. If it is past that storage voltage and you don't intend to touch that battery pack, you can then bring it back to the storage voltage. It probably is gonna be already close to the storage voltage, so you won't need to do much with your battery. Now you can take that camera or your phone and you can download the video or take a look at the video right there on the phone app or the camera app, and you're trying to get a couple values. Now the values that you're trying to get here is the initial charge voltage. When we started the charge, it was at a voltage and we're talking about just before that zero time moment. So when it was at resting voltage, what was that? You're going to plot that, you're going to write that down, and then you're going to look at exactly what that voltage was. I choose the 10 milliamp hour gets placed into there. So just around that 0.2% of the capacity of the battery pack, our 5,000 milliamp hour battery pack, we take 0.2%. That is 10 milliamp hour. As soon as it gets to the 10 milliamp hour value, we are able to pull the voltage there of it. The reason why we are pulling a value of voltage at the 10 milliamp hour mark is because we don't want to falsify our results by charging the battery pack so that it brings it up into a completely different voltage mark and then we get wrong values. So we want the time here to be relatively small. 10 milliamp hour is enough to do it. It's also gonna be somewhere around this many seconds here that I'll place up on the screen. So that is going to help us out in order to capture these values. Now we got two voltages. Now we can go through the math in order to figure out what is the resistance of our battery pack. Now the calculation is really simple. The first calculation that we're gonna do is we're gonna take our voltages that we've measured. We've measured a value that is larger and we got a value that is smaller. We take those two values, the big one subtract the small one, and we get a difference of voltage there. Now what we wanna do with the output of that value, we wanna take that difference that you just calculated and we wanna divide it by the current that we just charged the battery packs. What I did in addition to this, I thought I should point this out, is I did measure the current value that my, my charger ends up putting up on the screen. I measured that with an amp clamp and it comes out identically to the value that it shows up on the screen. So 7.50 amps is what I see on the charger screen. I also see right around that value on my amp clamp, meaning that I'm confident with the current value that we're seeing here on the charger. You'll wanna do the same if you don't don't have full trust in the values. Will it matter so much? Not really because the important part of what we're doing here today is going to be the consistency for every time that you measure the internal resistance there at home. You don't want to necessarily compare against other people's results, but you'll be able to compare against your own results for different battery packs. And if you use the exact same method, this is going to work well for you. So we take that delta value and we're going to divide it by the current that we have now just 
pushed into the battery pack. In our case, in our example here, it was 7.5. So we take our change in voltage, we divide it by the 7.5 amps, and now we're gonna get the resistance in ohms. Now that you have that value in ohms, this is going to be the resistance of your battery pack for the all cells, for the total of the battery pack. If it's a 4S pack, you simply need to just divide this value by the four cells, and this will give you how many ohms each cell is on average. It's not individual cells, of course. We're averaging all the cells in your battery pack, so it's gonna give you the result that you need right away. In our case, here is the value of our internal resistance of the battery pack as calculated. And I do have to say that this value actually comes very close to the value that is calculated on the charger. However, we're not looking for absolute consistent results between one method and another. What we're ultimately looking for is consistency using your own standard method. Another thing that you want to tag on to this process is the temperature that you are reading these values at. Now, what I wanted to do here is offer up another method that you can use. Instead of using the charge voltage and the resting voltage, what we can do is the opposite. We're going to use the max charge that we just got, and then we're going to wait 10 seconds or so for that battery to come to a resting point and take another voltage value. Now I choose a 10 second mark because this is what seemed to work in a half a dozen trials very similarly to what my charger shows. And if you want to change that value, much like any of the other values that we've used here, you can go ahead and use a value that works for you. As long as you are measuring the voltage with a multimeter and you're going through this process and I show you the calculation, you can manipulate the values that get you the voltage points that you want to use best for your situation. Well guys, I hope you learned something in this video, a process that makes it possible for that everyone is able to measure the internal resistances of your lithium polymer battery pack. I'll leave in the link in the description below to the multimeter that I specifically end up getting here. And we're gonna be seeing more of this in future videos as well as another product from the same company. We're gonna see that in a video too. Hope you enjoyed it. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.